Okay, I'm Stephen Cox. Uh, I'm a sculptor. I'm English, and I'm generally known for working in stone. And the, in particular, I'm very, very interested in working with the hardest stones in the world. Uh, in particular, imperial porphyry. My interest uh, in working in stones in a more, in a specific way or historical way, uh, was to do with the fact that when I moved from England to Italy to begin work on an exhibition at the Palazzo Reale. My work was out of a kind of conceptual minimal background and uh, I was working with ideas of developing from a tabula rasa from big plaster reliefs made with building materials in the building process. These things were not architecture, they weren't sculpture and they weren't painting or they were all of those things, mm. but precisely their, the activity of making these things was uh, as a temporary um, uh, installation, uh, this was back in the late 70s, um, using uh, building plaster and as I say, um, just commoner garden building techniques. So there was the sort of demystification of the processes right. of, of, of art. Um, but one of the things that developed from the very first pieces I made, which were to do with relief, if you like, the minute a line is either uh, engraved into a surface or a line is seen to evolve from the addition of material, then the space of otherwise blankness becomes ambiguous in terms of spatiality. Mm. So I was working on these panels that were leaning against walls and the reference on the surface by using illusionistic techniques through using Alberti's principles of single point perspective the images on the surface of these either carved stones or leaning slabs uh, was an image of the space within which the panel was leaning okay yeah so I was involved in a pictorialism which really opened up a whole idea of working from an idea of an artist being someone involved in the dialogue with contemporary issues. So, using Vasari's on technique, I travelled around Italy visiting the quarries uh, of the stones that he listed as being of, in of interest to uh, the artists of the Renaissance. So I went to, at the beginning I was in Milan, I went to uh, places that were of particular interest to Adrian Stokes. So I went to the quarries of Red Verona marble mm. uh, and subtypes like Bronzetto di Valpolicella, which was a beautiful kind of champagne colored uh, um, stone from the Verona region. Um, and I suppose that was my main sort of interest in Milan and then I went south to Florence and I went to visit the quarries um, that produce the uh, beautiful blue sandstone uh, of Pietro Serena, mm. Pietro Forte and uh, associated materials in that in that area and then when I went south to Rome where I was lent a house um, near Bracciano, Lago di Bracciano at a place called Anguillara which was close to the um, Peperino quarries, which was the building material of Rome before travertine was right. introduced. So it was a kind of very, very profound significance to the Etruscan civilization. And the interest in the historical as well as the materiality of these, uh, these stones listed by Vasari. And worked in these places and created exhibitions using these stones. Mm. Interestingly, the one stone that um, was not listed, uh, was not available in Italy, but listed by, by Vasari, was the very, very hard, deep red and liverish stone called Imperial Porphyry. They knew, I think, that it came from Egypt, but nevertheless, no one had a source for it. Uh, but its interest, which Alberti became profoundly kind of obsessed by, was how, with the uh, metallurgy of uh, the Renaissance, it was impossible to carve this material, mm. how did the Romans deal with it, which they did with extraordinary uh, um, you know, in, create imagination. Um, 
there was obviously a fantastic uh, will to master this hardest of stones. Yeah, yeah. So these are, thing, are things that became of particular interest to me. And I'd been working in Italy. I had a studio at, America, at the American Academy. Uh, and I worked on this exhibition using, at that time, Peperino stone, and uh, exhibited in Rome at a gallery called La Salita, which was quite a well-known um, a well-known radical gallery, which coincidentally was the place where Richard Serra had his first exhibition when he was a student at the American Academy. So, as time went by, I did some interesting exhibitions, I hope, uh, in various places, working in Florence, working on ideas with fragmentation, uh, the idea of archaeology being, if you like, as creative for the present as it's to do with trying to give an indication of what came down to us from mm, the past. Yeah. So the scientific uh, analysis, the sort of forensic look at fragments, marks on stone, what they mean, was some somehow uh, very uh, reassuring that whatever happens in the past, whatever comes to cause, let's say, a, an extraordinary change in the powers that be in directing how civilization is going to go, often requires some kind of iconoclasm. Mm. But the, in, the extraordinary, uh, say, forensic kind of analysis of uh, things of the past enable us to rebuild a picture of the past and see how the passage of time is changed by all sorts of forces. So I left to go back to England, and out of the blue, a couple of years after I'd returned, um, I was asked by uh, the Foreign Office, uh, the British um, kind of Foreign Policy Department, who we've always had an idea, I think, in England for the soft power of art, and so the British Council had a very, very profound uh, interest in politics in a subtle way. Um, and I was asked if I would be prepared to make a sculpture for the Opera House in Cairo as a gift to the Egyptian people from mm. the British. So uh, this rang a bell, and I was very, very excited about the possibility of being able to negotiate uh, access to the imperial porphyry quarries of the eastern mountains of Egypt, which I knew a bit about. I'd done some research. And so this sequence of events enabled me to go meet some people. It was amazing that amongst the people I met was the Minister of Culture in Egypt who had happened to have been a friend of, uh, of, Jan, um, of uh, excuse me, change, so I'll do a cut on that. Um, in meeting the, uh, the Minister of Culture in Cairo, um, I met a man who had been a very good friend while he was director of the Egyptian Academy in Rome of, um, of Giovanni Carandente, who had been a great friend of uh, many American artists and uh, was very, very significant in the uh, selection, the invitation to David Smith, one of my heroes, uh, to repre represent contemporary art 25 years before in the Spoleto Festival. Mm. So, uh, I, whilst I was in Egypt, uh, in Egypt, I was able to speak a bit of Italian uh, and communicate with the Egyptian ambassador, who was very, very helpful to me. And through the Minerals um, Geological Mining and Mapping Authority of, of Egypt, I was given access to the quarries in negotiations with the military, because this area was a militarized zone mm. when I first went there. So access to the Imperial Porphyry Quarries was given to me. And since then, I've tried to maintain access to the material through various, uh, uh, various people who collect stones in the desert and sell them through various sources in Egypt. And so here we have uh, in my studio in Shropshire, about 20 tons of uh, porphyry, uh, about 15 tons of which came back just a couple of years ago to go with the material that I brought back after I had finished my project for the Opera House in Cairo. I'm pleased to say that the sculpture that was made for it, or there's a pair of sculptures, are still standing. 
and um, one of the pieces that I brought back which wasn't selected for that particular job is in the collection of the Tate Gallery and another piece, uh, a very large piece, is here with us here which we can see later.